by the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end, and the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك Ya Nur Allah, my dear viewers of Madari channel, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa you are watching Rise and Shine. Let's begin, inshallah, Azza wa Jal, by listening to the Tilawat of the Glorious Quran. It does come along with the Urdu translation. Please do pray. We can have this made available in English too, inshallah, Azza wa But for now, my dear viewers, make good intentions because the more good intentions you make, the more reward you shall gain. Yes. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ That the a'mal, our actions are judged, are based upon our intentions. And he said that نِيَّةُ mu'min, The intention of a believer is even greater than his action itself. نِيَّةُ mu'min, خَيْرٌ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ That the intention of a believer is even better than the action itself. So make good intentions. Let's begin this morning by, to, by listening to the beautiful verses of the glorious and the holy Quran. It does come with the Urdu translation, as I did mention. Um, also, one other thing to keep in mind that whilst the Quran is being recited, we should give our attention to the recitation of the Quran. Sallu ala al Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. मैं अल्लाह ताला की पनाह में आता हूँ, शैतान ए मर्दूद से. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. अल्लाह के नाम से शुरू, जो निहायत मेहरबान, रहम वाला. ذلك من أنباء القرآن قصه عليك منها قائم وحصيد. ये बस्तियों की खबरें हैं कि हम तुम्हें सुनाते हैं. ان میں کوئی کھڑی ہے اور کوئی کٹ گئی وَمَا ظَلَمْنَاهُمْ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ فَمَا أَغْنَتْ عَنْهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمُ الَّتِي يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن شَيْءٍ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن شَيْءٍ لَمَّا جَاءَ وَمَا زَادُوهُمْ غَيْرَ تَتْبِيبِ اور ہم نے ان پر ظلم نہ کیا بلکہ خود انہوں نے اپنا برا کیا تو ان کے معبود جنہیں اللہ کے سوا پوچھتے تھے ان کے کچھ کام نہ آئے جب تمہارے رب کا حکم آیا اور ان سے انہیں ہلاک کے سوا کچھ نہ بڑھا وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ اور ایسی ہی پکڑ تیرے رب کی جب بستیوں کو پکڑتا ہے ان کے ظلم پر بے شک اس کی پکڑ دردناک کرری یعنی سخت ہے اِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِمَنْ خَوْفَ عَذَابَ الْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَجْمُوعٌ لَهُمْ نَاسُ وَذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَشْهُودٌ بے شک اس میں نشانی ہے اس کے لیے جو آخرت کے عذاب سے ڈرے وہ دن ہے جس میں سب لوگ اکٹھے ہوں گے اور وہ دن حاضری کا ہے وَمَا نُؤَخِّرُهُ إِلَّا لِأَجَلٍ مَعْدُودٍ يَوْمَ يَأْتِ لَا تَكَلَّمُ نَفْسٌ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ فَمِنْهُمْ شَقِيٌّ 
سعید اور ہم اسے پیچھے نہیں ہٹاتے مگر ایک گنی ہوئی مدت کے لیے جب وہ دن آئے گا کوئی بے حکم خدا بات نہ کرے گا تو ان میں کوئی بد بخت ہے اور کوئی خوش نصیب تو وہ جو بد وقت ہیں وہ تو دو زخم ہیں وہ اس میں گدے کی طرح رینگیں گے یعنی چیخے چلائیں گے وہ اس میں رہیں گے جب تک آسمان و زمین رہیں مگر جتنا تمہارے رب نے چاہا بے شک تمہارا رب جب جو چاہے کرے Uh, topic inshallah today we shall be covering a little of the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam today inshallah azza wa jalla my viewers of the channel uh, we shall be hearing a little about the youth of rasulullah sallallahu alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam when he was in his early days inshallah azza wa jalla we'll just begin from when he's a child inshallah ta'ala and we'll see where we get to now my dear viewers of the channel and this is one of the practices yes of dawat islam and many other alhamdulillah organizations all around the world islamic i'm speaking about those with the correct creed um, alhamdulillah this is the view of many people to honor and mention the name of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to remember rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to spread knowledge and teach people about rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wasallam uh, my dear viewers of the channel this is why mashallah whenever you have madani channel on alhamdulillah we're always hearing things anything in regard to the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wasallam his characteristics etc my dear viewers we have listened to the quran al kareem one thing remember that listen to the quran al kareem brilliant but but it is not a substitute for reciting the Quran, for opening the Quran, for looking at the Quran, and then reading the glorious Quran, my dear viewers. We must regularly open the Quran and read the Quran. Uh, read it along with the translation in English, or your own language, whatever your mother tongue may be, uh, to read it in your own language, as well as the commentary of the glorious Quran. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had taught, various companions of Quran, but he didn't just leave it as a Quran, no. He explained the Quran too, what it meant by verses of the Quran. And if it was as much as possible, what is made available to you, read inshallah, just make sure one very, very important thing, that whenever you are reading an Islamic book, it's with anything, isn't it? That whenever you are reading a book, it needs to be authentic, doesn't it? It needs to be authentic. You can't just pick up any book and think, oh yes, it's, you know, Brilliant is is very good. No, some uh, sadly uh, uh, you could say even the opposite, um, because there has been many innovations added within. Um, you know, we find so many books upon this material. So whenever you read in a book, if it's a book on science, if it's on medicine, then no doubt the person should be an experienced person, shouldn't they? So similarly, if it's about the deen, if it's about the religion of Islam which is more important than anything else, then it should be written by a proper, uh, somebody of the correct creed, somebody from the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And this is of absolute importance, in fact. And it's not just reading books. Whenever you are listening to speeches too, some people think that, oh yes, just take anything from everyone. No. Some of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there was a person who possessed false and corrupt beliefs, and even if they were reciting the Quran, they would say, no, I don't wish to hear this from you either. There's reason for it. These are the great early awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The views of Muhammad we must stay strong with those people 
who are of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, those who are the true lovers of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. MashaAllah, let's listen to a Naad Sharif, the Naad Sharif of the greatest of all mankind, the peace of our hearts and our minds, the most generous and kind, the last and final Prophet and Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Mustafa jani rahmat shama'i bazmi hidayat sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam ka farmane alishan hai ki joh koi shaks mujh par ek baar darud paak padhe Allah azza wa dhal us par apni dhas rahmatin nazil farmata hai uske dhas gunahon ko mitata hai aur اس کے دس درجات کو بلند فرماتا ہے آج جو کلام آپ سننے جا رہے ہیں اس میں آپ کو بار بار درود پاک پڑھنے کا موقع ملے گا آئیے نات رسول مقبول بھی سنیے اور درود پاک کے ورد میں شامل ہو جائیے سچی بات سکھاتے یہ ہے سیدھی راہ دکھاتے یہ ہیں سلح علیہ وسلم سلح علیہ وسلم جلتی ساتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم قصر دنا تک کس کی رسائی قصر دنا تک کس کی رسائی جاتے یہ ہیں آتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فیض جلیل خلیل سے پوچھو فیض جلیل خلیل سے پوچھو آگ میں باغ کھلاتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ساری کسرت پاتے یہ ہیں صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رب ہے رزق اس کا ہے کھلاتے یہ ہے 
सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम अपनी बनी हम आप बिगाड़े अपनी बनी हम आप बिगाड़े कौन बनाए बनाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम लाखों बलाए करोड़ों दुश्मन लाखों बलाए करोड़ों दुश्मन कौन बचाए बचाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम मर कद में बंदों को थपक कर मर कद में बंदों को थपक कर मीठी नींद सुलाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम बाप जहां बेटे से भागे बाप जहां बेटे से भागे लुत्फ वहां फरमाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम माँ जब इकलौते को छोड़े माँ जब इकलौते को छोड़े आ आ कह के बुलाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम पीते हम हैं पिलाते ये हैं सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लाहो अलैहि वसल्लम सल्लम सल्लिम की ढारस से सल्लिम सल्लिम की ढारस से पुल पर हमको चलाते ये हैं सल्लाहो 
وسلم کہہ دو رضا سے خوش ہو خوش رہ کہہ دو رضا سے خوش ہو خوش رہ مجدا رضا کا سناتے یہ ہے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم حبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم ریویوز ابن انشاءاللہ ماشاءاللہ you are watching rise and shine الحمدللہ عز و جل listen to a beautiful کلام uh, praise upon رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وعلا علیہ وسلم comment to today's topic the blessed life of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم the seerah the biography of رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم is the best the best nobody oh, of course nobody can compare to that uh, the life the, the habits the etiquette the mannerism of rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wasallam but what's brilliant about this matter is one thing we must remember is that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was always a prophet so some people think that you know rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was given the yes and this is true that he was given the first revelation at the age of 40 This is what we believe. That when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was 40 years of age, then he went to the Mount Hira and he would regularly go there, this cave. And what would he do? He would worship Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he was given the Quran al-Karim. This is when the Quran al-Karim was first revealed upon Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But this does not mean that that's the time when he became a prophet of Allah. No, Rasulullah was a prophet. before he was even born before even the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself states that i was a prophet at that time when hazrat adam alayhi salatu wasallam was yet between what water and soil my dear viewers before, meaning before the creation of hazrat adam alayhi salatu wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a nabi this is something we must remember of course yes he is the last and final prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's completely impossible for there to be another prophet or messenger after him now why is it that i said this because when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was young he had not received the revelation no because he said he received the revelation at 40 but we should not say some people make this mistake i'm thinking before he was a prophet no this is incorrect we don't say before he was a prophet no is before he was given the first revelation before he was given the revelation but he was always a prophet this is just something to keep in mind inshallah so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he always he always not only possessed but portrayed the best of manners and he was a respected person from a very very young age you know some people uh, and, and this is uh, some people just their disposition which they have Uh, some people medieval zaman and so even as a child they act different they don't act like just any other child this we find and we see even nowadays sometimes you think this child how old is that child and they say he's four years old you think what really four years old you know the, the way he's speaking is like he's eight nine years of age and we find this you know somebody who's three four years of age but the way they speak it's all about experience isn't it Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from a very young age Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam always possessed had the best of manners there was it's not that there was ever such a time that okay but during his young days the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know there was something we can point fingers towards no Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is perfect and was perfect for his entire life 
Rasulullah sallallahu was always special. Everybody knew it. Everyone, inshallah, we shall mention a few things. One, um, we have spoken about the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So we won't mention the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But when he was very young, uh, it was a norm for that day and age that the people, they would not bring up their own children in Makkah al-Mukarramah. Why? Because that was considered city life. And the language was diluted, you can say. It wasn't the proper Arabic language. So this is one reason. Another is just the air itself and the food. Because this was a city. Although it's nothing compared to our cities. It's nothing compared to our cities. Now, all the, nowadays we have cars and all of these hydrocarbon um, but you know, things which are, are completely surrounding us, Madhavios. There are so many things around us. And the atmosphere around us, the air around us, is clean but to a, to a level. You know, in terms of cleanliness, in terms of the atmosphere around us. It's said that many people who live next to the highway, they, they have these problems and people die early due to this too. Uh, due to fuel emanating from cars, etc, etc. The point is that the air here in cities is not as clean or pure, is it? Now in them days, it, you know, compared to here to now, no doubt it was really pure. But even for them, they would say that no, uh, in the city life is not as good. So one, the language. Another is um, the the training, training them. Yes, because when they would go, they would breathe that air. They would have it was hardship. So it was hardship even in Makkah al-Mukarramah. But going out towards, they would go send them towards Taif towards the oasis, towards the desert side. And that was even more of a rough life. And when people live a rough life, then they be strong. And these people, they be strong. Um, our, in our, nowadays, Madhivism, the, the reality is we are weak. Honestly, we are weak. Me, me myself, I remember when joining Jamaat al Madina, And in our days, because we were the first year, we had to sit on the floor. We had to sit on the floor, Allahu Akbar. And we would be sitting on the floor and having our lessons, and I could not sit. I could not even sit down on the floor. This is the state of us. Our legs would start hurting because we were not used to it. We could not sit on the floor. You know, we used to have to lean. And this is what happens. We see many youngsters uh, in the masjid, etc. They're all right at the back, all leaning against the wall like they're all old men. We have been weakened. This is the reality. This is just one example I'm showing. It doesn't mean a person's very weak just because they're sitting on the floor too. But in many ways we are, aren't we? Imagine we were to sleep on the floor. It would be very difficult. We would possibly not be able to sleep. This is, so some things, Madhavi was just living life. Sometimes living a hard life is good. And it's very important in fact. And this is, this is like a separate topic in terms of uh, making things easy for our children. What do we always wish? We wish for everything to be so easy, so comfortable for our children. And any father would. You know, I'm not saying I'm any different, Madhavi. I think, yes, you know, it should be comfortable. My child should be comfortable. My child should be happy every moment of the time. I'm going to give my child whatever they need. But, and honestly, it's a beautiful lesson from the life of Rasulullah wasallam. We need to make them struggle. And this is the reality. Although we may not like it, although it may seem hard for us, but we need to make them struggle because this is what is going to toughen them up. This is what is going to make them strong. And there's this two things here is that nowadays we think that they don't need to be strong. That is good. We have this sense, this, um, I don't know why people think this, that we don't need people to be strong, just intelligent. Yes, no doubt intelligence is important. But it's better to be strong and kind than to be weak and vulnerable. You must remember this. It's better to be strong, be kind, be merciful, than to be weak and vulnerable. And many views of Madhuri Channel, this is really important that we strengthen our children up. And I don't just mean, one is physically strengthening them. And just by going to the gym, it doesn't physically strengthen a person, Madhuri views. But another is mentally. For them to be able to cope, because they're going to face, you know, you're with them, but how long can you support them for? Then they are going to be living their own lives. They are going to be having, whether they have money or not is a separate matter. They are going to be experiencing 
life themselves. A time will come and they'll move away from you, or maybe you'll pass away. You can always be there for them. And they will be surrounded by other people who will possibly try to bring harm to them. This is what we're living in a world where people try to use each other. And your children need to be able to bear that. They're not going to have the father figure with them who's, or they're always dependent upon. Then what is going to happen? They're going to break. No, they need to be strong. They need to be able to, um, you know, deal with, socialize, deal with people. You know, they need to be uh, not gullible, not just believing anything that anybody says. They need to be able to handle things. Sometimes life's hard. Sometimes bad things happen. It happens to everybody. But you must be strong. This is very important that we teach uh, our children the, yes, the correct manners. Respect, you know, respect, no doubt. Not to develop pride that, oh, you're stronger than this person or beat this person up. No. Not violent, no. But strong and kind at the same time. Strong and also become intelligent too. Uh, teach them about the Quran, about the Sharia, about the Sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa But as I was saying, coming back to the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they spent time in the desert. And this would happen for, you know, possibly you could say centuries later. This practice continued and did happen centuries earlier. Where, and the, at that time, the people of Makkah and Makarma, they would send the children at a very, very young age. You know, newborn babies, few months. They were still during that time of taking milk from their mothers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as a very, very, uh, you could say, newborn baby. Um, the, the story is that Hazrat Halima the Sa'adiya, radiallahu ta'ala anha, um, she, along with her husband, along with other people from the, from the tribe, they came towards us. They would do so possibly every single year, um, around about at this particular time. So they all came, but now this is the Halima to Sa'adiya, radiallahu anha. Her life was quite difficult for her. Her animal was very, very weak, and she was slowing down everybody else. People were complaining, you know, hurry up, be quick, catch up with us. You know, so things were hard for her. She comes to Makkah al Mukarrama and they go looking for asking for people's babies because this was their job. So this was like their job, wasn't it? That they would take care of other people's children and they'd possibly take some money for it. Uh, depending on what has been fixed, what has been fixed. Now, preference would be given to those people who no doubt had both parents because then they were able to pay more. Is that the Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, remember that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's father, Hazrat Abdullah, had already passed away, radiallahu an. His father had already passed away, so he was an orphan. And they would not give preference to orphans, they would prefer to take others. Because they would be able to, you know, take more money, etc. Um, and, you know, everybody had a child. Hazrat Halim to Sa'diya, radiallahu anha, she didn't have anybody. And then later it was said, look, there's this um, orphan child. Let's, let's just take an orphan child. And Hazrat uh, Halim to Sa'diya, radiallahu anha, she takes Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa And the scholars, this is something which is beautiful. The all the scholars said that as soon as she took Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa in her arms, everything changed immediately from then. It's not like, oh no, later things will change. No, immediately from then, everything changed. That same animal now became stocky and strong. When they were traveling on the, on the journey back, it said that the people, the rest of the caravan, they said, oh, Halima, you know, have you bought a new animal? The animal you are riding on, have you, just, have you bought a new animal or something? You know, you're ahead of everyone else. Look how strong it is. Look. She says, no, the animal is the same. But there's somebody else who's riding upon it now. She knew from the moment she took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was special. And people would normally take the child for about two years. This would be the uh, time people spent feeding foster mothers. So, so they would feed the children their own milk. So they would normally take care of the child for about two years. But the things which took place, that is the Halima to Sa'adir radiallahu anha, she loved it so much, having the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the amount of blessings bestowed upon her, her family. She was happy. Everything was good. Everything was perfect. She could tell this child was no ordinary child. It was, it was a special child, you know, from the beginning. And she loved this so much, my dear viewers, I said that normally they would spend about two years. Normally it would be about two years 
they would spend with the foster children and then they would re return them. But when she came to return Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she comes to Hazrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha and she tells Hazrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, you know about everything. Hazrat Amina can tell her, look, you know, look at the stairs. Now she's a mother too. And she's the real mother, isn't she? Hazrat Amina. But she also saw that the, saw the love that Hazrat Halima Sa'diya had for the child too. And the benefits of this, and Hazrat Halima says, you know, can I, can I have him for longer? And he said that she takes him again, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for uh, a longer time. And he said approximately, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, up until he was about four years of age, he stayed with Hazrat Halima Sa'diya. Although the norm wasn't up until about four, it was about two. This was the norm. But up until about four years of age, he stayed with Hazrat Halima Sa'diya. And then why is it that he left? Or why is it that he was returned to Hazrat Amina Rudra That we shall hear about very soon. First, let's go to the uh, daily reminder. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. To develop our character, our mannerism, Islam teaches us this. And we have the most perfect role model in front of us, which is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran mentions to us that he is the ideal role model. His sunnah is a complete and comprehensive way of living. It is a complete lifestyle. It's inside the house and outside the house. It's in the private and in the public as well. Amir al-Sunnah Damat Barakatumul Aliyah, the founder of Dawud Islami, encourages us to practice upon the Sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to refine our character, make a'mal or pious deeds, which you can download for free from App Store or Play Store, if you fill this out and act upon it on a daily basis. Believe me, you will see positive results in your life. If a person wants to become a practicing Muslim, an upright member of society, the Naik A'mal is your helper. Amir Ahl Sunnah Damad Barakatuhul Aliyah includes one point there. Because it's a self-questionnaire, you're asking yourself questions. Did I do this? Did I lie today? Did I perform my five times salah today? Did I make good intentions today? Did I respect my parents today? Did I obey the traffic rules today? Etc. Daily questions, weekly, monthly, yearly questions, and lifetime questions as well. And one of the beautiful points that we have to ask ourselves that did I speak politely today, even with a newborn baby? Allahu Akbar. Because as a baby is growing up and you speak politely, what will happen? That baby is going to learn good manners, is going to learn polite speech, good words, and you yourself will develop your own character as well. Try to download it, try to practice upon it as well. Allah Azza wa Jal grant us understanding and keep us on the path of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba Ikram, Ahlul Bayt, and Awliya Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Mureevi was of Madani channel. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. Uh, we have, uh, we are speaking about the blessed life of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. What did we say? That when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was around about two years old, he said, you know, he remained with Hazrat um, Halimat al-Sa'adiyya radiallahu ta'ala anha. But then, why did he leave? He was around about the age of four, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he didn't exactly leave. It's not like, you know, he walked from Ta'if back to Makkah al-Makarram on his own, my dear. No, it wasn't like this. But Hazrat Halimat al-Sa'adiyya radiallahu ta'ala anha, she took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam back and gave, it to, and gave him to his mother, Hazrat Amina radiallahu anha. Why was this? This was because once, when he was still with Hazrat Halimat al-Sa'adiyya, he said that he was spending time with other children. And they saw a group of people coming. Those young children, they became, they were afraid, and you could say they ran home, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained unafraid. He was unafraid. He was not afraid, my dear viewers. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remained there. And when he saw these people, they came closer and closer and they took hold of him. And they split his blessed chest. 
they split his blessed chest, they removed his heart. And there was, as mentioned, a black dot. And the scholars, they state about this, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is a mercy for all of the worlds. Now his being a rahmah lil alameen for all of the worlds, within the worlds, within the alam, well, who's included? The shaitan's included too. So this part for the shaitan, this was removed. Allahu Akbar. This is a, a beautiful interpretation of uh, the scholars, alhamdulillah, azzawajal. So that was removed and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the his blessed heart was uh, replaced, was placed back into his um, body. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, due to this madhivyos, and he remained there. Now, the rest of the children running to their parents, they knew that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is still there. The people that came out looking for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they went to the same place and they found that he's, he's in the same place. But when they saw his face, the Halima Sa'diyah, he saw that the face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was pale. His blessed face was pale. And Madhivi was, remember, of course it would be. His heart was removed. It's not, it's not mine, I think, although it was done in the best of ways. It was done by an angel. This is the Halima Sa'diyah, she said, at that moment I became afraid that what if, you know, this is a special child. This child is no ordinary child. And what if, whilst he's in my responsibility, somebody causes him harm? So she returns uh, to the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Amina radhiyallahu She tells her of the story, and she says, "Look, I'm going to um, hand him back over to you." But as the Amina radhiyallahu anha, when she hears this, she's not afraid. This is what was. This is the point, my dear viewers. That these people they knew how special this child was. Just the Amina knew how special Rasulullah sallallahu was. She said, there's nothing to be afraid of. You do not even need to worry. This child is protected. This child is no ordinary. You don't need to worry about it. She was not worried. She's the mother. She knew this child was protected. And then, subhanAllah, it was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to spend some time with his mother. So he spent some time with his own beloved mother, Hazrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. But he did not get to spend uh, much time with Hazrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha. He did not get to spend much time. Um, it's said that when he was at the age of six, it's been about two years or so, um, what happened was Hazrat Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, she took Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to a known in that time as Yathrib, nowadays al Madina al Munawwara. And then on the way back, they came by a place known as Abwa. And the Prophet Wasallam's own mother, Hazrat Amina, she fell ill and she passed away. So she passed away at a place known as Abwa. And the Prophet Wasallam went with his mother, but he also went with somebody else. So somebody else too, who played a huge role in the life of Rasulullah Wasallam, And she was a mother figure of Rasulullah Wasallam. This was Hazrat Ummi Ayman. And Hazrat Umi Ayman, she used to be a slave of the Prophet Sallallahu father, Hazrat Abdullah. He, Hazrat Abdullah, was gifted her by his own father, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. So, um, luckily, she was also, Hazrat Umi Ayman was there with Rasulullah Sallallahu who was only at the tender age of six, who was at the age of six. And as I did mention that you can, even in this day and age, you can go. It's like in the middle of a desert, really. It's very difficult to find. You need somebody who's experienced, who knows their way. It's very difficult, honestly. Very difficult to find. Nowadays, even proper roads with road names and everything, it's hard for us to find things. So this is like in the middle of a desert. Um, but there is a point there uh, upon a hill. where was mentioned that this is the grave of Hazrat Amina, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and if we can, we should try to go and visit. We should, my dear viewers, we shall go and visit such places, the graves of you know, Hazrat Amina, the companions. Hazrat Amina, radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine how special of a place she has. Imagine what rank she possesses. Allahu Akbar. Not a huge, a great rank, inshallah ta'ala. Um, but as I was saying, yes, try to inshallah go to such places. I think one problem we have is that when we do go visit the Haramini Sharifain, uh, Amadevi Uzumadin inshallah, 
Now I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his ability to go there again, inshallah ta'ala. But one problem we have is, yes, mashallah, we go, we perform our umrah. One question is whether we're performing it right or not. This is another matter. But mashallah, many of us do. We perform the umrah, we'll go to Al-Madinat al munawwara But there are so many other things too. There are so many other graves too. And there's so much more to learn. And we should. And yeah, some people may say that no, sitting at the, beside Rasulullah is enough and I wish to spend all my time there. Yes, that, that love in its own place is beautiful, brilliant, not, not, of course no harm. But my dear viewers, uh, we should also go visit, for example, the, the grave of the mother of Rasulullah and we should also go to other places too. No doubt this is of huge benefit to us, inshallah. Um, so, only spending two years with his own mother at the age when Rasulullah was six, his own mother passes away. His own mother passes away. And then he returns to Makkah al Makarama. They buried, she's buried there. And they return to Makkah al Makarama. He, he returns with Hazrat Umm Ayman radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, my dear viewers, let's move to the daily hadith shrif. I don't know how much more we're going to be able to cover, uh, but let's listen to the hadith shrif and then we shall continue. For a few minutes, inshallah, Azza wa Jal. Let's move to the daily hadith shrif. Sallu ala al-habib. Sallu Allahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallu Allahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah. By the grace of Allah. Three blessed sayings of the Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam about finding faults in others. You know, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam is the perfect example for us. He is a role model for us. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam is a personality of the best character. The Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa sallam is a personality whom Muslims Muslims look up to his eating, his teaching, his drinking, his sitting, his tending. Each and everything is actually an example for us. The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam lived a life and set it as an example for us to follow. So looking at the advices of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, three great advices of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about finding faults in people that what sort of a discouraged act it is. Allahu Akbar, the Prophet of mankind, the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous and kind Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the person who discloses the faults of a Muslim in this world, the person who lets out the secret is the person who reveals out the hidden faults of a person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal that person's faults up to this extent that that person will be humiliated in his own home. Allahu Akbar. Another narration about the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has said, the one who removes the difficulty from a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall remove a difficulty from him. And the person who conceals the faults of a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall conceal that person's faults. Allahu Akbar. Help a person. Allah will help you. Remove a difficulty. Allah will remove your difficulties inshallah. In fact, Another wonderful hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam has said, the person who conceals and hides the faults of a believer, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala shall grant him entry into paradise. SubhanAllah It may sometimes be hard upon our inner self. Right? If we have found a fault in someone, we can't, you know, just relax and you know, sit down. We want to let it out to someone. You know what happened? You know this happened? You know that happened? No, 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 no. If we just make sabr, what have we got to lose? We just have to lose a bit on the aspect of temporary fun. But what do we get in return? We attain Jannah in return. We attain the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah shall hide our faults. We are, you know, sinners. Imagine if our faults are disclosed on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall hide our faults. We make dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us, you know, among those people who have respect on the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the shade of his throne on the day of judgment. These few sacrifices in this life shall turn out to be of great means for us on the day of judgment. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. 
Sallu alil habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam Today we shall be hearing about another fruit inshallah azza wa jalla Just before that I would like to mention uh, one more stage of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That between the age of 6 and 8 um, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was now under or being looked after Taking care of his grandfather under the responsibility of his own grandfather, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, reviews of an And he spent about two years too with Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. Uh, now, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, again, you know, the way everybody cared and loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. Anhu, he also loved Rasulullah sallallahu ever so dearly. Azad Abdul Muttalib was also the leader of the Bunu Hashim. He was also the leader of the tribe Madivyos. So this is very, very important because he's been brought up directly, yes, and his own grandfather, but also directly, um, you could say, in the hands of his own grandfather, the leader of the tribe. So now more people, if you think about it, more attention is towards him, isn't it? Because if he's always with the leader, and he would always spend time with the leader, with Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. And he said that Hazrat Abdul Muttalib, uh, I think it was within the harem itself, or besides the Kaaba al Musharrafah, he had like his own uh, seat, his own place, where nobody could sit in that place. Nobody could sit in his place, because he was considered, he was a respectable person. And people knew that, you know, it's disrespectful for anybody to sit in the place of Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. Although it is said, the scholars say, that sometimes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a child would go walk and he would sit in this place. And sometimes other people would say, oh, you know, well, why is he sitting there? Don't sit there. And he would say, no, stop him. They would stop those people. And they would say, no, allow him. He can sit in my place. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Uh, one story which is mentioned, it said that somebody lost, I think, a camel or some camels from the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People would go out in search, uh, looking for these camels, and nobody would be able to find it. Nobody would be able to find them. Uh, sometimes people would be paid, go look for them, nobody could find them. These people, they knew that this young child, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever he's given any task, he never fails. They all knew he's special. So he said that one of them said, oh, can you please go find it? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out in search for it. Hazrat Abdul Muttalib radiallahu an, he's thinking, where is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Over at that time, they didn't call him a prophet. They would say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where is Muhammad? Where, where is he? And he was worried because he would always have him with him. He's thinking, where, where has he gone? And some people stated that he went looking for the camels. And think, you sent him to go look for the camels. He was a child. See, so you sent him to go. He was worried. Maybe something's going to happen. He was, he was terrified. He was thinking, you know, where is he? Let's go find him now. We're more worried about him than any camels. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns with the camels. Abdul Muttalib radha he said he possibly hugs Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, I'm never going to let you out of my sight again. Allahu Akbar. So even his grandfather, the amount of love he showed for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then his grandfather sadly also passed away. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to the age of eight. And after that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would spend many years with his own uncle, who is known as Abu Talib. And that's all for today, inshallah, in regards to the seerah. My dear viewers, let's move to the uh, fruit for today. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah. A musk melon belongs to the melon family. Like other melons, it is also a summer fruit. The musk melon is a species of melon that has been developed into many cultivated varieties. These include smooth skin varieties such as honeydew, crenshaw, and cassava. Calorie-wise, it 
it is less in numbers and comprises of more nutrition there are the amazing health benefits of musk melon musk melons are rich in potassium which helps in regulating the blood pressure and keeps hypertension away they have a high doses of vitamin a and beta carotene which helps strengthen the eyesight as well as sharpen it and reduce the risk of developing cataracts musk melons have negligible fat content in them they also contain the good carbohydrates derived from sugars which are easily broken down by the body the musk melons are super rich in vitamin c they strengthen the immune system they stimulate and increase the white blood cells which aids in destroying viruses and bacteria they also prevent premature aging of cells the high quality of vitamin c helps in the treatment and also prevention of ulcers vitamin c eliminates free radicals thereby saving the cells of the body from becoming damaged by them and also preventing the risk of gaining cancer it is also believed that they are good for ulcers and provide a prevention from kidney stone they contain good amounts of fiber which helps in a healthy digestive system and prevents constipation issues it rejuvenates the lungs and helps the body recover from nicotine withdrawal faster the musk melons relax the nerves and muscles of the brain which suppresses sleeping disorders like insomnia eating musk melon increases the flow of oxygen to the brain which eventually makes our brain calm and stress free Musk melons have anti-aging properties which makes the skin glow and become acne free. Vitamin B content and an adequate amount of protein in the musk melons strengthens your hair and your nails. Musk melon does have anticoagulant properties because of the presence of adenosine within it. Adenosine is a blood thinner which further prevents blood clot creation and protects you from heart related problems. Add musk melon to your diet to gain refreshing benefits from this fruit but is some brothers this was musk melon for you by the grace of allah by the grace of allah allu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam ma sha allah azza wa jalla my devi was I think we need to move straight to I was speaking about the musk melon um, I don't know if it is in season uh, Allahu alam it may be I'm not I'm not very good when it comes to these sort of things um I do know my devils of the inshallah the about fruits themselves and you know I love eating fruits but when it comes to what seasons which fruit are going to come I have no idea to be honest I do know that during the summer we have watermelon and we find mangoes i know this because you know i just they're amongst my favorite fruits and i love having them and i'm thinking oh when is the watermelon is always in the summer other than this i don't really know much uh, when it comes to fruits and you know the season for fruits nevertheless my dear viewers of the channel alhamdulillah azza wa jal um, every single day we read something from the uh, monthly magazine and uh, i was just taking a look at today's Uh, what we shall be hearing about what we shall be seeing today today inshallah azza wa jal this is from the magazine look how beautiful honestly it's set out so beautifully to uh, the pages information mashallah writing pictures is it's, it's beautiful alhamdulillah today rise of mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam over the ummah this is what i shall be reading from inshallah azza wa jal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة 
wa asila. Honestly, it's such a beautiful ayah. Uh, the translation from Kanzal Iman is, we have indeed sent you, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa as a present eyewitness, i.e. hazid and nazid, and a conveyor of glad tidings, and a warner, in order that, O oh people, you may believe in Allah and His Messenger, and honor and revere the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and you should glorify Allah morning and evening. Commentary. The above mentioned blessed verse shows the greatness and glory and the status and rank of the greatest and noblest Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It also contains the obligatory rights upon the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the ummah. Moreover, it also consists of motivation for the glorification and worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mentioned here is its summary. The old Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we have sent you as a witness to the deeds of the ummah, a conveyor of glad tidings for the believers and obedient ones and a warner of divine punishment for disbelievers and those who are disobedient. So all people believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and help and support Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, honor and revere Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, subhanallah, then there's another entire page. Um, something to be mentioned is, here it states, if viewed in terms of the rights of the beloved and blessed Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa of the ummah, this blessed verse consists of his three rights described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first right, faith. The second, we've also been told, help and support. And the third, honor and revere Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So information is given for every single one of these first in terms of faith. And we shall read this and then we shall uh, leave it here inshallah. In terms of faith, it is absolutely obligatory to believe in the nabuwa, to believe in the prophethood and the risala of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Similarly, it is also essential and compulsory to accept everything that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought from the divine court. The fulfillment of his rights is obligatory not only for Muslims but also for all human beings. Why? Because he is a prophet for all mankind. His mercy is for all the worlds and his favors are for all humans and even for all creation. The one not having this belief is not a Muslim, even if he has belief in all of the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So we must have faith and then we must help and support Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must honor and revere Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But subhanallah. Uh, that's all time has allowed us for today. That's all for now. Inshallah, we shall be returning with more rise and shine. Swallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallam. By the grace of Allah, by the grace of Allah, even the darkest night will end. And the sun will rise and shine, and the sun will rise and shine.